welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. Super, super excited um, today to share with you my friend and amazing psychotherapist, Rick Scott. Um, he has a practice of counseling, coaching, and uh, consulting. He works with individuals like me. He works with um, couples and he works with uh, corporate executives. And today we're talking about authenticity. And we, Rick and I got into this conversation a couple weeks ago and it was so good. And I just, it's, this so relates to art making and finding our way. And uh, anyway, I just, I can't wait to dive into it. Thank you so much for um, being here. This is so great. Thanks, Nick. Good to be here. It's my yeah. favorite topic. <laughs> well, you're good at it. Welcome and, and I think you're the first uh, psychotherapist that I've interviewed on this, but oh my God, it's, it's uh, so relayed. So mm. here's, here's just kind of how I'm trying to think of this is that one of the challenges for me has been um, what I noticed is when I started my art making, I was very, I was challenged by a lot of limiting beliefs and, and, and just feeling not super confident. Obviously I'm doing a new thing and art making especially is hard to create something that you have, you're not very good at, or you haven't done before. That's what art is. It's always, you're always growing and put it out in the world and all the feelings of vulnerability, all those things surface. And the game has been for me and how I coach and teach help artists is hopefully get it to where they're not thinking about that at all. And they can just be more themselves and that's flow state. And you know, we all, that's what we try to do in workshops. That's what I'm teaching. And so, but we were talking about it and it was, uh, it was, you know, we make our best art when we're most like ourselves, when we're authentic and we trip a little bit around inauthenticity when we're trying to be something we're not, we're looking over our shoulder. And so maybe we just start there with what, how you, you help people go from inauthentic, inauthenticity to authenticity. I mean, that's your expertise and that's been really helpful for me. Maybe start with inauthenticity and what, yeah. what that is. And we all have it, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, we do. I, I, these, um, a lot of the ideas for me and all the work I've done over the last 30 years is really kind of standing on the shoulders of a lot of people who have done a lot of work. And so um, I've kind of cultivated, put all that together and I have my own way of doing it. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, this is just my way of thinking about this. Yeah. It's not any, you know, objective reality. Okay. Um, I think inauthenticity is um, probably rules the day. Like certainly in the Western culture, I would say the majority of people are inauthentic. And so it, it, I had to really sort of boil down for myself working with people, what is inauthenticity and what is authenticity? So I've defined those. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, it, for, Especially because we're all that, <laughs> or most of us. I, mean, I think so. I mean, we're both, right? Yeah. I think we're always both. I think that people, you know, when they come into life, and so it's hard to talk about authenticity without talking about mm, um, something that probably equates a little bit more with spirituality or something that is not conditional. If you think about inauthenticity, inauthenticity is a conditioned self-sense, very programmed. Yeah. So when we come into life, we're probably the least conditioned, right? And so are most authentic. To me, I use the word, you know, it, uh, an unconditional aspect of self would be something like soul or creativity or authenticity or um, creative impulse, awareness, consciousness. So interesting that creativity is authenticity. I think ultimately, ultimately creativity is authenticity. But I do think there are levels of it, you know, that people are trying to achieve. If, so if you come in and you get, um, you, we all get, you know, conditioned, it, largely in our family of origin, right? So conditioning is what I just call the big download, and everybody gets it, Every, everybody, ever born. So you come in and you get a download, and where does that download come from? Your family of origin, that which you're born into. So in authenticity, hmm, there's a genetic underpinning, your family, right? And then you're raised in an experience. Okay, that's a download of conditioning. You're, you're soaking up 
how you're being raised, your parents, whatever, whatever you're being exposed to. That, um, Gabor Mate does a wonderful characterization of this now. Um, it builds on a lot of other uh, theory, but the idea is you're born into a family of origin. You're there for 18 years, and that family of origin has all kinds of unfinished business. It's not, it's not awakened and pure, and so you're born into it. That is a non-negotiable survival need. You have to live there for 18 years. <laughs> and so there's a lot of accommodation that gets made. So that's care and connection to other. And then there's a competing need, which is authenticity. Authenticity is your most connected. You come in the most connected. And in order to stay attached to that family, you make all kinds of conditioned compromises based in that idiosyncratic family. Like, like I'm thinking, I just want to make art, but my dad wants me to be a sports star. So I want the love. So I stop being who I really feel I should be and try on different ways of being to be loved, to be loved, accepted. to be, uh, to, to survive. To survive. There's a lot of compromise and I think it's natural. This is not an unusual state. It's not pathological in any way. Everybody does this. So that download, those conditions, or what I call ego, not, not in the structural way. You know, your ego needs to be, uh, it's a construct of personality theory where you have a strong ego. That's not what I'm talking about. For me, ego is the perception of separateness. And the greater the download that pushes us away from authenticity, right? Our perception of being separate from our experience increases. So families that are not in tune with development produce more of that, right? Because you have to compromise more you can, it goes all the way from, you know, just imperfection. It can be anything in families, alcoholism, you name it. Any of the, any of the unresolved business, depression, just living, working, dual working yeah. families. Yeah. Right. And so we have a distance. That inauthenticity becomes what we basically just call the first identity, your first self. And that's just conditioning. And you could say that that is inauthentic or to varying degrees. It's your starting point. It's, it's almost like here's the work you've got to do in your life <laughs> at 18 or wherever, 15, whatever. And, and then you're trying to swim back. And, you know, I think for artists, this is the state we're after, but we have to swim through all this and, and figure it out. Another wonderful um, piece of a model that I was working with with a kid and a family a long time ago was, if you said inauthenticity, um, inauthenticity is often characterized by reactivity, fight or flight behaviors perceptions of threat where they don't exist. Largely based in just, you know, we've compromised ourselves. So feelings of inadequacy, which we all have, vulnerability, worthiness, these are questions that, mm -hmm. that are in the condition. Yeah. So you have reactivity on this end and creativity here, okay? So some, the kid said to me one day in, in a meeting, he said, hey Rick, have you ever noticed that those words are exactly the same letters except for the placement of the letter C? which I said, I'm trademarking that immediately, okay. which was basically oh. the place from which you see. So reactivity oftentimes has to do with sort of levels of inauthenticity, which are just guideposts. So you can look at your reactivity, see what you're guarding. It's usually pain of some kind of download. And that's, that brings us into sort of what do you do about it? How do you identify these states? And how do you migrate from inauthenticity to authenticity, from reactivity to creativity, from fear to love? These are all the types of mar to migrations we're trying to make. And, and those are around um, growth and evolving, and that's the natural tendency. That's why we're here? Or how do we like, well, maybe I don't want to grow, or maybe I'm, you know, but we want to move towards love. We're moving to creativity. Is it, is it a natural tendency, you know, like a plant to grow or? It, it's a really great question. I, I think the underpinning is everything is connected. I, I think, you know, if you look at quantum mechanics, it's, it, we're saying that, you know, these are all fields, that the entire universe is connected. I think the truth is connection and the perception of separateness is the problem. Mm. And we're, wow. the only, we're the only species that has the perception of separateness. We can self-reference. My St. Bernard doesn't do that. He doesn't get up and say, oh, I wish I was a golden retriever. They're so cool. My head's so big. I'm so stupid. Right? I mean, I mean other animals aren't doing this, right? We do this. And in, able to, in that self-referencing, that's where we get into this reactivity. Um, most of what I see around inauthenticity is the belief, a false belief, that we're inadequate. We're not enough. I think by, by definition, perceptions of separateness are, are in other words, not whole. The, the answer to the question is everything is one. Everything is connected. 
to the extent that you lose that and you believe you're separate, suffering occurs and mm. conditioning occurs. So we're trying to migrate out of that. Mm. I'm, I'm part of this, which you and I talked about, which is authenticity feels creative. It feels intentional. It's mindful. Vulnerability is fine. I say perceptions of threat are low. Yeah, and vulnerability is still there, but it's tended. It's hidden. It's, it's, hidden. it's guarded. Okay. I mean, you know, when people come in, they don't lead with their vulnerability. They've learned to, to suppress or, you mm -hmm. know, because it, can be dangerous, it can be scary to reveal vulnerability in a family, in a context where it wasn't valued. So we all have these defenses that sit on top of that, right? That vulnerability. When I'm making art, I think of the, those words where you're embodied, where, you know, that flow state, but there is vul vulnerability still in the room. Oh, you know, it, it's there and I almost feel like and then there's risk, and I feel like that's necessary. It's never going away, in other words, right? Or maybe. I think vulnerability is the true state. I mean, honest to God. You know, I, I have this thing I say tongue in cheek a little bit like, you know, for people around here, there are no real threats in your life. Look around. I mean, there, I mean, there are places where, but not, not here. There are no real threats. Mm -hmm. and, if the, and if there are no real threats, yet you're constantly guarding, you're constantly perceiving threats. Yeah. Then the question has to be, where's the threat? It's in here. It's, it's disconnection from yourself. It's feeling that you're not enough. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. Shame. What the most watched TED Talk, I think, in the history of TED Talks is Brene Brown on shame. Why? Because everybody feels on some level like they're not enough. Yeah. And, they, and they're guarding it. And that's what you're doing here. I mean, part of it is you're peeling it off, right? You're, you're becoming aware. You know, the other words, if you, look at, if you look at inauthenticity, it's very reactive, it's very automatic, it's very conditioned, it's very rigid, it's, it doesn't feel good, it feels lousy, devalued, unworthy, not enough, lacking. And you see a lot of defensiveness and a lot of invulnerability. And I imagine you see it everywhere. I mean, it's got to be in the way of all creativity, whether it's art or relationship, mm -hmm. you see it. Yeah. People project it. When I think of workshops, it's almost scheduled uh, or, you know, it follows a pattern on a seven day workshop where we come, we're excited, we're all hopeful and we feel great, but we're very aware of who else is in the room. It's a little, you know, who's better and we're feeling that. And then we get excited and there's, and, but then it's a, like a day or two in it and we call it, it's usually the workshops go from like a Sunday to a, to a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I, I call it crying Tuesday. It's literally, <laughs> It's, it's like, you know, which people, not everyone, of course, but there's a breakdown, you know, and, and it's almost like it, it has to, we, we just have to like feel bad. And sometimes someone will, will walk out of the, the room and, and leave. And, it, and it's just, but so now I just say, listen, I know you're all excited and everything, but the thing is called crying Tuesday, you know, and then other people are like, well, didn't happen to me on Tuesday. Is there a crying Wednesday, you know, but make no mistake when you're, climbing out onto the skinny branches of something you haven't done before mm. in front of people mm. and it's not hidden mm. that therein lies the work and and if we can minimize that and and that we do people get through it mm. and then they get cranking man thursday comes and people are just like cruising it's perfect actually if you look at it in a group context right so you have these people come in i don't know how many you have and they start to form a connection a belongingness a sense of togetherness. And I think if conditioning goes in with people, it comes out with people too. So people are slow, they dip their toe in, they're a little vulnerable. If they get support around it, they can try it some more. Look, these conditions, they exist in our lives everywhere. I mean, here and everywhere in their lives, right? And so the game is to be aware, aware of them. I mean, so much of this self-consciousness, the judgment we have toward ourselves, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, it, in large part, you have to kind of accept it in yourself. I mean, part of what I get to do is help people see it and not judge it. Let's say, you know, it, fight or flight behaviors, whenever we feel this unworthiness, we all have sort of a fight or flight pathway. Fight is not fight necessarily. It can be manage, control, argue, you know, all the way to fight or a flight pathway. People shut down, they withdraw, they're shy, they stay in the background, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, so you, here they are presenting themselves why would we believe that art other, anywhere else that, that they wouldn't do what they do? Your opportunity is to walk them through that together. 
that when they show vulnerability, they're supported. It's encouraged. When they yes. withdraw, they can go out, take a breath, see it, come back. You know, I mean, all of these places, it's like the dojo to work on these is every context of our life, especially something that's as, that's as demonstrably, you know, uh, creative with intention, like art. I mean, this process we're talking about is unfolding right with the brush, with yes. the, right in front of your eye. Yes. I love the idea that we're better together, that we can make things in a group. And this is, this is what Art to Life is. It's a community of people that are on the creative path together who have realized that it's just way easier and way more fun and supportive. You go faster, further, you know, all of those things. I see that when you make art, and even if there's tentativeness and vulnerability and riskiness in the art, like you're admitting it, it's almost like getting up and giving a talk and you're, mm. and you're, you get up there and if you're nervous, the best thing to do is you guys terrified, you know, yeah. and, and then, then everyone in the audience can relax. When people look at art like that, it's authentic art because it's, it's not showy, it's just who the person is and they're drawn to it, they connect to it. That's what I love about it. This is the business plan for art, making connective art that feels like you draws people towards it because they're, it's, it's at ease. It's not, there's not, it's not derivative, it's just personal. I think when you have a group of people in, you have to make an assumption that there are degrees of inauthenticity and authenticity all over it, right? And that I think what has to happen first is that the expression of wherever they are is okay. So you have somebody comes in and they're really shut down and they're really embarrassed and they don't want to show themselves and be vulnerable right. and they get up there and they put and they paint that and they paint that inauthenticity. And that's okay. It's like you have to experiment with that. And it's not un unlike in psychology where you would say the shadow parts of yourself, the parts of yourself you have the most judgment about, the parts mm -hmm. of yourself that you feel the most afraid about, the unworthiness or whatever, the shame, that maybe as people come in, they, they just show up where they are, they project themselves into the art, and then you make it okay. And once they make it okay, they can integrate it. They're a little more okay with it. You don't, re you don't eliminate your ego by beating it up. Right, right. right? It's not going away. It's not, it's not going away. You're, I, you could say that you're informing it. You're informing it with the larger truth of connectivity mm. versus this contracted you know, yes. perception of separateness. Yes. That's why the groups that you do are probably the most powerful context you could have. It, it is. It is. Yeah. When I felt the most free, which is sort of how I describe it, free meaning I'm, I'm just enjoying myself and I'm not worrying about how it's going to turn out or if it looks like something or it's supposed to be a certain way or it's as good as something else. Those kind, that work um, ends up being uh, the most successful. And, and the work that I like the most that I that seems to last longer for me. You know, we're all making things and mm. and and we tire of ourselves, right? Like we make something and then we throw it behind us and we hate looking back at our work. But the work that is made when we feel ourselves, it's it's a bit of a forecast of who we are and who we're becoming. And and it has lastability. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, it's it has more value, not just to us, but I was always amazed that that mm. is the kind of work if I had a show those were the pieces that sold, the pieces that were easier, the pieces that were, that I wasn't sure about. I mean, it's just kind of amazing, you know? It, it, it's a good point. I think we're, you know, the controlling parts of us, the parts that are insecure, they're controlling. They want to manage to an outcome. And usually, initially, it's sort of an expectation, whether it's cultural or family or whatever it might be. So. If you, can peel the, if you can peel that off and not manage to a particular outcome, like you said, be more inside out, let that expression be as it is, you know, you're probably going to be closer than producing more authentic types of work. But I think it's really hard to do. I think it takes, it takes a lot of awareness. I mean, to be aware of, of even this, the, the evolution of our consciousness, you know, mm -hmm. moving from inauthenticity to creativity. Where are you having those conversations? I mean, they're few and far between, right? And I think that's part of it. Maybe, maybe what you end up doing is you set up in, uh, like something that's larger than the art, which clearly you have, right? That there's an underlying process that is that is mm, 
that you're seeing in the art, but is underpinning it such that people are committing to this process of growth and evolution and the art is simply the projection. I love it because this, this is exactly what, why it's called Art to Life. This is what got me so excited because, oh, I'm interested in how to mix colors, but in the process of teaching myself and teaching other people, I just, I just, it's, you know, it's art to life, but it's life to art. And it's, it's both. You make amazing art makes incredible life. You need both, right? It's that awareness of, of both. Yeah, I like the life to art thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense to me because it's a little bit like um, it's just that medium, right? For the expression of the level of consciousness that we're holding, the level of connectedness. To me, it's always the migration from separateness is always versus. Like it always seems like the more separate, the more versus a person is, even in themselves, the, the, the less connected they are, even to themselves because of the compromises. And as, that, as, that, as those blocks are removed by awareness, we see them. We start to examine that. We know the history. You've looked at your family history. You know what the download is. Those blocks, you said it, it's a flow state, are removed and that innate connectedness starts to sort of rise through again. It starts mm -hmm. to shine up. You know. So we're kind of emptying mm -hmm. garbage. You know, we're, em <laughs> we're emptying, uh, we're, we're taking the trash out. Yeah. But you have to have an awareness that that's occurring. Mm -hmm. right? You have to have a degree of self-awareness around this and be curious about it. And not, not everybody is. I, I read a, uh, a statistic recently that said, in this country, less than 10% of people take advantage of mental health services other than psychiatric medicine. medicine. So, I mean, medical services. So less than 10% of the people are involved in, and that's just therapy as a, as a vehicle for self-awareness, or, or you could say a spiritual practice or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's, the numbers aren't that high. Yeah. And where you can have this conversation, um, we need to expand that. Yes. And it's happening, you know, it happens through the work, your work. It happens through in other venues. It, it comes out, it's necessary when we start to make things, when we're creative, that's a, you know, there's, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Create, creative, and I see it, you know, it's not just in art, but you can see this authenticity, this creativity show up in people because it has qualities. There's interesting, you know, I made this list a little bit about, you know, how you can tell the difference between where you're standing. You know, like what state you're in. Yeah, if you're in a connected state, say, versus a separate state, or, or the state of what I would say is a, more, is a more authentic self versus an inauthentic self, so you could say that, you know, truth, connection, authenticity, creativity versus sort of an illusory separateness that people hold, which is often more conditional, conditioned. You can feel the difference in these words. Mm -hmm. you, you can start to notice kind of where you're standing. It, I always tell people it's, it's not necessarily um, what you're doing. It's from where you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> Here come from, right? Where are you coming from? Because you could be have it could be an amazing. I mean, we've all had those experiences where we're uh, everything looks great on the outside, but you're just feeling lousy in the situation that's amazing, right? What, you know, these these inauthentic places don't really allow people to feel fulfilled. They'll look out for something and and create dependencies, whether it's a codependency on it, whether it's people or 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 drugs or alcohol or spending or whatever it might be, in order to fill that felt sense yeah. of, of inauthenticity. And those are failures. Those conditions they don't hold up. This is a, this this work is an inside job, <laughs> expressed externally, right? That's yeah. the game. Yeah. The, so those of, words like what I have I have just wrote some of these down. Um, so I, I, on the connection side, conscious versus the un, you know, unconscious, creative versus reactive, loving versus fearful, empathic versus judgmental, compassionate versus indifferent, connected versus disconnected. You can go down the line, true, false, honesty versus dishonesty, trustworthy, untru the account, accountable versus blaming. You know, when you're sitting with a person mm, yeah. and you start to talk to them, you can start to get a feeling for like where they are, like from pl the place from which they're organizing themselves. You know, this is going to sound like a judgment, but um, I think there are, you know, there are definitely degrees of, of awareness. There are, diff there are different degrees of consciousness. Mm. There are degrees of authenticity. And when you're around a person who's really working on authenticity and they, you can feel it. It's, it's a with. It's yes. not versus, it's with. It brings people up. 
It's a together, a connection, an empathy that you don't that's often so feel with people who, who are coming from that separateness, that woundedness. And that's what I try to promote. And I think you're doing the same thing through this vehicle. Yes, yes. Our making is the process of becoming yourself. <laughs> with a big S. Yeah, yes, yeah, right, right. But I mean, I just flashed on when you see an amazing painting or a piece of art that moves you, it, it is, it is, uh, it can just hold so much. It's right. Like it's, it's many of those words that you just shared, you know, there's an honesty about it. There's a, there's a wholeness to it. And it, there's, it, and there's an expansiveness to work. And, and, and this is what I think is so interesting, a, a challenge or, or a thing that people think that I've coached so many artists and, and generally speaking, we go from a more contracted place to a more expansive place. We, we start wondering if we can do a thing and we're working on the side of a table and then we get a little, and we hide it when people come home, we don't tell anyone that we're doing this art thing. And, and, but then, you know, we put it out on the table and we leave it there. We'll show somebody something. And then we, you know, eventually, you know, and you think of all the ways through, then you're, you, you know, working on large paintings and showing them. And, but I'm thinking of, you know, so, so it's the, it's this, your mind has to catch up. Your inside has to catch up to a certain extent to be able to make the things. I, Sometimes I, that we try to make a thing and, and our, we haven't caught up to it yet. So it feels like a big, huge thing that just showcases our, our, it's, you know, are uh, we're derivative in a large way, which is horrible, you know, or we're self-aware, too self-conscious. I mean, I've made work that, that self-conscious work is so annoying because you don't know you're doing it. And then all of a sudden you make it all and then you realize it. And it's just, oh, it's the worst. <laughs> it, 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 you know, you said making, I, I think creativity is risky for people. Yeah. It, it's, you know, uh, it's easier to do the softer thing. I mean, Joseph Campbell's stuff, uh, he did that little, they did a documentary called Finding Joe, and it was a summary of Joseph Campbell's work, The Hero's Journey. And Joseph Campbell, and it says, look, the, the journey for every human is to live from your bliss. I think your bliss is your soul, your highest degree of creativity in the life. But mm. in a culture like, this culture is hard because um, it is, it's so mm, form focused, it's so thing focused. It's like, I'm gonna feel authentic if I can just get to private jet status. Then I'm gonna be. Then I'm gonna. I've made it. Then I'm okay. If I yeah. if I can redo my kitchen enough and have the right girlfriend and have the right blah blah blah, everything is external. We are an extremely egocentric, self-driven, you know, in a culture. And you're saying, you know, bring this in. You know, bring disconnect from that. Paint from the inside. Mm -hmm. Do art from the inside. Mm -hmm. it, and and that's scary for people. It's it's scary to be authentic. Yes. A great little documentary called Finding Joe. It's like an hour and 19 minutes. If you want to see some, it, it characterizes this beautifully. You know, I mean, I'm not making this up. This is, there's a lot of people who've done a lot of work on this <laughs> yeah, long yeah, time before yeah, me. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the direction we're headed. And every, and I think, you know, it's, it's, um, it takes courage to be authentic. It's, it's, it, to be inauthentic is easy, it's the default. You have a default mode network in your brain and it does, it's habituated, self-sense. The science of perception basically says you're a habit and unless you look into yourself and you understand the underpinning that drives that, then you're not making and, conscious and decisions. And is it safety that drives the habit? Um, I think the habit is driven. I think the habit is driven by the perception of separateness, and I think the perception of separateness, by virtue of its definition, automatically says we're not whole. So I think it's the myth. I think it's the myth of, or, or what Tara Brock calls the trance of unworthiness, that all humans feel at a very deep level, based in this perception of separateness, they don't feel like they're enough. They don't feel whole. And when you don't feel whole, it, you'll do everything to feel whole. And so we begin the life by looking out and pleasing and doing everything I need to do to feel a sense of adequacy. Be a good student, make enough money, be perfect, you name it. Yeah. It goes back to the attachment issue and the compromise. Yeah. I think we just need to see that as natural and normal and, and not unhealthy, that, ah. that that happens for every single human. I mean, your genetic condition, there's never been a genetic condition like this, and there's never been a person who's had your experiences. So in your download, you are terminally unique. Nobody can understand Nick Wilton because he is, well, that's shared by every other human ever born.
So it's, it's both unique and universal at the same time. I think we need to trans transform the uniqueness. We're, we're, we're all in this together. We're all connected, you and me. Mm. The, the more creative you are, the more creative I am. Yes. The more creative I am, the more creative. You know, if we could all start to see through that lens, a whole bunch of problems would be ameliorated. Mm. It, it'd be harder to kill people in war. It would be harder to, you know, if, if you knew that you were connected. And so again, I think the base of it is, you know, we perceive separateness and we feel not whole. And then we look out to solve for that. Those conditions are the ones that we need to be aware of and, bring, and, and so that we can transform them with the truth of connection, the truth yeah. of love or whatever that is. You do it in your way here. It could be, it's an underpinning. I do it the way I do it. You know, I'm trying to get that word out to more people. But um, this should be a conversation. Yeah. Everybody, sh this should be taught in high school. <laughs> Can you imagine? A class that, yes. that somehow starts to bring awareness to this. And rather than, you know, usually this happens when, um, when conditions fail. You know, it's the talking head. This is not my beautiful house. It's yes. not my beautiful life. How did I get here? I mean, that's right. the failure of condition. And, and it comes in crisis. It comes in struggle. Almost always I have a client, well, a friend. He says, Rick, nothing changes without a crisis. I'd like to believe that's not true, but I do think, you know, that crisis and opportunity are inextricably woven together. That, that the crisis oftentimes is a push out of inauthenticity. It's a push out of a pattern, yeah. out of a yeah. habit, where otherwise you might not be doing it. You're just gonna do the status quo, paint the same shit you already did, always did. Yes. It's safe, you can, it's right. easy, but you know you got more in you and you're gonna, but you're not gonna push it. Yes. So the universe says, this is shit. We're not And no when you have to migrate from the thing you know, it, it's not, it, it's scary, it's thrilling, but it usually, you know, it kind of, is, it's a mess. And, but then, then you get that, then it lifts. I mean, it's like this, you know, um, so I, yeah. It has a little to do with trusting the universe. You know, it's like you're swinging on, you know, in the circus, you're swinging on the trapeze and you can't get the other trapeze unless you let go. You gotta let go, fly in the air, <laughs> yeah. Trust on some level that the next thing is going to be there and usually, you know, and, and then catch it. Then that's where you can't, I think creativity, you, know, you can't know what that's going to look like in yeah. advance. Yeah. If you knew, you might take, but you can't, you don't get to know. You don't get to know. No. So whether it's faith or whether it's trust or whether it's just, I think that comes from a larger sense of connection. Like the people that are, have the hardest time are the ones who feel separate. I, I call them the separate superior. You know, the, the, ego sort of, the ego sort of splits in two ways, you know, uh -huh. like oh, uh, you, you either guard the unworthiness or you guard the, that, you know, by, oh, like more like codependency. So, you know, you give up everything for everybody else because you're, you're guarding this sense of not being enough by making sure everybody's happy. It's an epidemic. And I make sure you're okay so I don't feel inadequate. But that, wait a second, wait, love. so how, okay, I totally know this. Uh, this is very familiar, but I'm going to feel better by making sure everyone else feels okay. But what, so I can pat myself on the back and I'm actually not, I'm gonna caretake everybody, so therefore I must be a good person, clearly. I don't think that you know it. I, I think you learn it. I mean, I was a black belt codependent. I learned that I would please other people in order to be okay. It was a safety issue in my family. And so I knew what people thought before they knew what they thought. I put that on a resume once. I know what people think before they know. Well, that's not, I was proud of that. <laughs> I was just terrified. It was like, well, I have to know that in order to be safe. But, but that was a codependent pattern. It, gar it guarded a sense of not feeling adequate. And I made sure everybody knew everybody was okay. The problem with that is it doesn't, it's not loving. I'm doing it and giving in order to not feel yes. inadequate. Yes. So it's yes. not that I'm loving, I'm right. managing. It them. looks this way. Looks, until people stop returning it. Because eventually those relationships fail also. Because it's like, you're expecting a degree of reciprocity, but they don't give it to you. Why? Because you don't even value yourself. You're not coming from value. Yeah. You're coming from a lack of value. Now, look, those are the easy ones. You get those people in the art class. They just want to please. They're cool. Mm -hmm. It's the other egos. It's the egos that split unworthy and superior. And we had a president who mod modeled that for a long time, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Extremely pathologically wounded and guards it with superiority. You guys are all idiots. Never touches the vulnerability. Putin, 
same thing. Yes. A profound sense of wounded separate, and therefore he can harm. Those are very, we characterize those in the direction of narcissism. Narcissism is an extreme wound guarded by superiority. It's still the wound, but those are harder nuts to crack mm. because they, they're, they're further from the feeling. You know, mm -hmm. They don't come for therapy, maybe once to complain right. about their they're part. they're never going to come for therapy. Yeah. So those are... Because they would say something's wrong. I'm not, with not, you. Not gonna, well, yeah, and they're not going to say, hey, I need help. No way. No. They'll say, you need help. So you go for therapy, <laughs> right? And then you're like, and I got, then, I, then what happens is I end up seeing those partners and they evolve out of that relationship. I help them with that. It's, it's a, you know, it's an epic. It, we see both this split. They're complements, actually. Uh, you know, the, the idea of narcissism and separate superior and the idea of inferior and giving it away are flip sides of the same coin. Uh -huh. They're both guarding the wound. They're both guarding the, the, the sense of not enough. Yeah. So you have to bring awareness to the feeling of not enough to get beyond it. I imagine in, you know, when people express it here, you can see it on certain levels. You can see yeah. the expressions of those. Those are usually painful. Yeah, and it's, they're, just, they're encumbered. Or, yeah, and, and the process of, mm -hmm. I mean, procrastination, not being able to do something we want to do because the doubts, it's tiresome. And, it, and we don't want to go and we don't want to make our art because it, you know, it just, it's hard. And actually it, the, the act of doing this stuff is easy. I mean, you're not, it's not like running 20 miles. It's, mm. but man, there's baggage with it. You it's know? not easy. My wife and I go out and uh, I won't dance. She's like, come on, let's dance. I'm like, nope, I don't dance. You She's don't like, what's dance? wrong with you? I'm like, <laughs> I'm too self-conscious. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not getting out there and I'm, I'll be, I, I've had to overcome that, you know, like, but I still don't do it. We'll go out and she'll be like, let's go. I'm like, mm, no, not really. But it least... shows up in all kinds of very odd, in idiosyncratic ways. And I think it's just starting to notice that. Like, what informs that? Where does that come from? Well, what's so beautiful is that I would say, you know, look, at, I'm really hungry or my foot hurts, you know, but you're like, I feel worthless and I'm not going out there, you know, which nobody can no one can have, everyone can understand that, you know? No, it's, you know, I, I joke around a lot about the codependency thing because it's an epidemic. You know, it's like, you ask the codependent what you want for dinner, what's the answer? Whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you, don't ever, you know, it's a little bit like, if you want to be authentic, there's a couple of, certainly a couple of ideas. One of them is like, I tell people, if you come from the separate inferior place, the codependent place, and someone asks you a question, then you, um, you pause for five seconds. That's a long time. And you ask yourself one question, is what I'm about to say true for me? Mm. No, I don't, not what, I already know what you want. Mm -hmm. I know what you want before you know what you want. I mean, mm -hmm. in relationships like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you, you wanna build, this is gonna sound odd, but you wanna build a strong self-center. A strong, everybody needs a strong self-center. Not a strong egocentric false center, greater than or less than, but a strong self-loving, it's like your grandmother told you, right? You, before you, you gotta love yourself. Yeah. Before, so for, if you're a codependently oriented, you wanna be able to know what you want. What, you may have left it behind a long time ago and not know what it is, because you don't experiment with it. But you, you know, what feels good to you? you? Get back in connection to yourself yes. and be willing to express it from that perspective is scary for people. So this is a, a huge thing that we're, we work with people on. It's discernment. You know, how do I know? Like, I don't know, this color, that color. And, you know, I, I do this so many times on, you know, in lessons. I can grab two objects, you know, the, the clock and the phone. I'll just hold it up. Which do you prefer? And there is no right answer. And everyone can access it. Mm. That's discernment. But we think that there's, we're, we're trained out of it. We're trained out of it. Yeah. Well, which one do you prefer, Nick? The clock or the phone? Because you're the teacher. Yeah. Like I'm gonna, oh, right. I know you like phones better than clocks, so I'm gonna go with phone. Yeah. And so there's, there's not a lot of authenticity in that statement, but that's it. I mean, and we, are, we, are the, we are a young culture. We're externally located, right? We look out to solve for the in, and, it, and it's why we're in the trouble we're in. And I think, I know, I love the idea of if, if inauthenticity has been compromised, 
then connection to the self is the first step back. And it, it requires, it, it seems like it requires more of a disconnection from so much of the, of the magnitude of stimuli that we get in the world. Like get off your phone, get off of, mm. you know, like get, unplug, get out in nature, walk around, like, like feel yourself. So much of this work is getting in touch with getting out of your head and getting more in your heart or getting more in your body. Because the, the feeling is not in your head. We're just talking heads. How do you feel? Well, I mean, most people can't answer that question. <laughs> they, get, they tell me what they're thinking. I have to ask it five times. But how do you feel? Well, I'm, I'm telling you, when I was I'm like, no, give me a feeling. I'll give you four, right? <laughs> We don't, and, and so we're just tuned out of that in ourselves. It's so complicated being a human being. I could so relate to that. You know, how do you feel? I haven't thought about that in six weeks. I don't know how I feel. And, but, but it's that place that we can make our best art from. We have to, we have to look at the work and, and it isn't rational. It's so much of the, I mean, I think it's like 70% of the choices mm. in art making are are felt. Mm. Felt. Felt sense. Yeah. That's what we say when we want to get over trauma and when we, need, what we want to get over this feeling of inadequacy. And I love what Mate says about it. He says, base, I think he's G essential. Gabor Mate. The, the more Mate, brilliant, genius, we'll, amazing. We'll put a link in the show the, notes. The, the, guy's the, amazing. the myth of normal, the new book, he's just a genius. And he, his characterization of it is, and he sets those two apart, you know, attachment and authenticity. They've been around a long time, but he puts them in a place where you can really understand this compromise. And so, so essentially, it's like, you know, how do, well you have, the game is to reclaim this authenticity, right? To get back in touch with, and he says, I think, not sure if he says this, but my interpretation in some ways is mm, conditioning is trauma. So, so mm, if, conditioning is distance, if conditioning is distance from authenticity, mm. and then, then the separation from authenticity is traumatic. So we're reclaiming, and the treatment for trauma is largely in the body. It's not in the head. It's not a thought. The, the Rumi quote is, um, uh, the soul goes to the head to hide from the heart. Mm. And I think authenticity has to do with bringing the soul home to the heart and back, getting back into, and that can be, you know, it's like self-love, as cliche as it is. Yes. Because this inauthenticity has nothing to do with love. It's judgment. It's all these other things. And that's what we're trying to remediate somehow, you know, trying to get the world to be a more loving place, whether it's through what you're doing, what I'm doing. But I think if we can bring it into our consciousness and have these conversations, um, we're, on, we're on the right path. And, and I can feel not doing so great or just it, things are rough and I will go and work on my art. And the, I think just the process, the practice of asking yourself what you want, what you like, it's just loving. Whether the thing, forget about whether it turns out or not, just saying yes and no I don't know if I'm making sense, you know, just saying yes and no in a, in a creative situation, painting a thing or whatever, that is, is nourishing um, in, it's a, in re a way. It's remembering, reclaiming, reconnecting. Yeah. And I think there's an experimental quality to it. You know, it's perfect, right? You're just projecting this on the, without, if you can do that without judgment, where mm -hmm. you, so, you soften. You said you don't do it with an outcome in mind. Mm -hmm. Then there's a softening, and it's an exploration. I, I think this movement from inauthenticity to authenticity is a very long road. It's like, it's like your, your life project. At least one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be more. I think it's the movement of something through time, uh, really? bi bigger than just the life. Uh -huh. You know, because I see, you know, people come in and uh, I just see all kinds of different levels of consciousness that people hold. And, and some people never, you know, they just can't awaken to this at all. They can't even be curious about it. So, I mean, you know, this is a very long process uh, for humans to wake up. It's been going on a long time. But I think there's more of a sense of urgency now because, you know, the, 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 the planet's in a little more, uh, the conditions are getting worse. <laughs> yeah. And it, the, the urgency is getting greater. I see adolescents becoming more authentic more quickly. Yes. Um, because oh I think, God, I think yes. they have to. Yes. You and I in the 80s, we goofed around and did stupid shit and we didn't have to pay attention to any of yeah. this. Yeah. But it's more urgent now. Mm -hmm. So you could say authenticity is urgent. You know, this movement is, there has to be more energy behind it.
we carry these phones and we have, you know, I'm thinking like Instagram and people, you post your art on there. And this is part of, mm. it's loving to share your work. We want to do that. We want to connect, but it's, it's fraught. Yeah. And, and how, how might you suggest we, we're not changing that. I mean, I don't think we want to abstain. I mean, we're, it's part of our culture. It's how we share our work. It's, but how can you give some That's ways of approaching it? To it's a great question. Um, once again, I think it's from where you do what you do. I think when you're really inauthentic and insecure and you post your work, you're really looking at likes and dislikes. Absolutely. You're toast. <laughs> it's over. You're going to get your lunch eaten. It is, it, it is not the place to post insecurities. You'll kill yourself. You know, I, I think true. the idea of, you know, people post like, I'm going to, you know, I'm putting my ideas out. You know, I've got this book coming out, not anytime soon, in the next six months. And um, I'm, I'm going to get shot down. for all, I, the People watching this podcast are going to be like, are you kidding me? I mean, you, when you put yourself out in the world yeah. with your stuff, you're going to draw uh, projections from, different, from people's places where they are. And that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. I think when you're courageous, like you, and you create your art and you put it in the world, you're not as attached to the feedback in ways that are that have anything to do truly with with you yeah, yeah. so there's a there's a detachment from that kind of feedback mm -hmm. and I, I think that the risk with you know the social media is we have adolescents who are out there in highly vulnerable states hot, because they're supposed to be you know they're just creating their experiment yeah, experience yeah, which yeah. is why for them so much of the reaction that people have is so destabilizing you know how it is you put your stuff out and someone tells you that's crap mm -hmm. what is that I mean, you've been doing this a long time, but it's still like, mm. oh, yeah. it doesn't feel great. But again, you don't, you don't personalize it too much. Right, right. I, I think that word, I love that word. Um, personalization is to make somebody else's experience about me. Everything you do and say to me is about you. It's not about me. You're projecting onto me. Mm. It's nice to know that. If we really didn't personalize, I'd never work another day in my life. It's people are personalizing all day. Right. If we can, if we're, so when we're coming from more of that stable self sense, we're creative, we're with, we're meaningful, we're purposeful, we're authentic, we're not as attached to that feedback in a way that destabilizes us. And Don't that, and that's take a practice. It personally. Don't you know, take it personally. Fourth agreement. The fourth that. agreement. Yeah. The, it doesn't say take 30% personally or 10%. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, it's tough. I mean, it's hard it's because hard. it's painful. And, and it often comes, don't take it personally, but it has, your name on it when someone's yes. saying. Yes, it still isn't personal. No, Nick, your art is shit. It's still about me. It has nothing to do with your art. I had a woman come up to me the other day. She said, oh, my boyfriend's kids are rejecting me. I said, how old are they? Oh, they're 15 and 16, and he's been divorced for a few years, and, and man, I feel really lousy, and I don't, wanna, I don't talk to them anymore. And I'm gonna, I don't even look at them when they come in, and I'm like, oh, this is, this is good. I mean, you know, these are kids. I, I, I mean, like, I tell her, their behavior has nothing to do with you. You have no idea where it's coming from. They're yeah. hurt. They're wounded. They're, I mean, what if it wasn't about you? If it wasn't about you, you know what would happen? You'd have empathy for them. Yeah. You'd have empathy for them. Personalization takes empathy out of the mm. equation. Mm. It's over. You personalize, now you've made their stuff about you. If, mm -hmm. if, if, you, if, we just, if that's all we didn't do, we would be so much healthier. Mm. But we're so external. I mean, this goes back to the attachment thing. Mm -hmm. The original attachments and compromises that I made, those are the kinds of relationships I will form. I will form relationships from the level of inauthenticity. And I'll repeat that pattern through time until the conditions fail. And then I might learn something about myself and decide I'm going to do my relationships differently. Yes. You know, I mean, you see it. What's so interesting is that we have, <clears throat> and why art, I think art is such a great um, practice is that we, we get to make something. Like you work with someone and they come in and they talk about themselves and their life and everything. But you got, the, you got this human. But, but artists have a thing to the side that they can get away from and they can see themselves and other people can see it. Like I always loved art because I wasn't particularly comfortable being in the limelight, mm -hmm. but I could, you know, I made that and we all love that. And because they are all liking that, I felt better, but I did, I was off to the side. Yeah. And I see this a lot, you know, where, 
we're introverts, there are a lot of artists that are really sensitive. And it makes sense that they have a, a surrogate thing that they make in a way, you know? It's helpful. Yeah. 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 You can, you know, it's not as direct, right? I mean, it's not as personal if you can take a step back from it. Yeah. And then you also, you know, you can learn from that too. I mean, because it, it is a projection of you. I mean, it is, it is a representation of yes. you on that. And it does, as you get more, people get more aware of you, they want to draw you in. So you've had to be more you mm -hmm. associated with the art. You can't be back, you know, well, who's Nick? Well, we don't know which one of those guys he is. He's in the background. Yeah, right, right. Now you're out in front of it. Yes, yes. Which yes. is why for you, this is personal. I mean, it's like you do your own work. I mean, that's what you do. This, this is not a theory to you, right? You, right. you work on this stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and you manifest it mm -hmm. in your art. And so it wouldn't, it's not surprising that it's uh, attractive. You know, authenticity is attractive. It really is. Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. A, more people are attracted to authenticity. It's, it's really comforting to be around it because we know it. We have it. It is who we are. That's so great. Yeah. Beautiful. Because, you know, I, I often say this, you know, when we, we make our art, but in, in a small part of this is do it for others because when people see you doing it, they kind of want to do it too and it gives them, it gives them the possibility mm -hmm. or at least a connection like, oh my God, I have a friend, he makes a painting and, 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 I, and I know him and, and, and I have it in my house now and I'm, I'm kind of connected to this guy who's doing this thing and this woman's doing this thing. And, you know, it's this, uh, it, it gives, um, it's, it's a rising tide. I, I always, I see it most with art and music. I mean, classic oh. artists, right? Like music, yes. art. And, and it, it touches people. You know, you don't, I can't touch people. I can only touch you because you're my, I only, I'm seeing people one-on-one, -on -one, right? Like you're touching, people see your work in galleries, they said like, oh, right, they're, you're touching them. And you're not there. I, yeah, you're not there, but they're touching you. Yes. You're connecting to them. Yes. And music is the same thing. Oh, music is even more so. I, what I love about music is that it's so, you can just download it on Spotify. I mean, a painting is like, if you're lucky, someone's gonna buy it and stick it in their house and that's gone now. But, you know, the music is, oh, it's. My daughter's a talented songwriter and guitar player don't I hope she doesn't see this but and she's wonderful and she's pretty humble and but she's she can get out there and do it she's in Scotland going wow. to school going to school uh, does she is she producing she does she's got a bunch of stuff on Spotify she she's she's super talented and she's a singer and she writes her stuff and she's very humble with it and the issue is um uh she said the other day she was playing out in Scotland at this place and she's yeah. learning to play out more. And someone came to her and said, you know, I had listened to that song. It really touched me. And she had always thought like, oh, that sounds, you know, she heard that with other people, your songs. And it was the first time that anybody had come back that she didn't know and said that song. She said, dad, I had the, for the first time I had this feeling that, wow, I mean, like maybe, maybe that is happening. Like maybe my music is getting out yes, there. Yes. And that connection, that resonance, mm. that, that's what we're after. Yes. And it's how we're, this context, music, art, I mean, it's all the same thing. It's all the same process. If yes. we can bring consciousness to that, you bring that to those people you work with, then it's more than art. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is, it's so much more than art. And, yes. and your specialty is that. Mm -hmm. Like people come to me and they're like, I wanna quit, I'm gonna stop doing my job. I hate it. I'm a commercial real estate agent, developer, whatever. And I'm like, oh, uh, maybe uh, we change that and we change the way you feel about the, and then it's really not about changing anything out there. So it's like, take that discontentment, we figure out where that's coming from, live from a place that is more fulfilling and then, boy, they could really use that in commercial real estate. Like yeah, be right, different, right. be different where you are, mm. you know, cha mm. change, change that. Mm -hmm. And then, and you don't worry about changing horses. You yes, know, or jobs, right. etc. It's this, this is, is the an beautiful inside thing job. about art. In order to transform, to expand, to grow, it's just the come from, and we can tweak that. And that's that's what I love. Is like you can teach someone a different way of thinking, and even though they have the same skills and color sense and the same materials, the work gets like twenty percent better overnight. It you just said it. It's, it's the so come, cool. It's the come from. Yeah. That's what you're facilitating. It's yeah. the place from which people are coming. Ah, oh, I love it. Um, so listen, so we're gonna wrap this up here, but I'm just curious, like what, 
what my, I mean, I, th I think what you were saying about connecting to the word of where you're standing to sort of become, bring aware, how can people bring awareness to awareness <laughs> to, well, to yeah. help them on, on this movement towards authenticity and easy kind of, I don't know. I, I love those things because I, I like to. I wrote a few things down steps. I think number one is you have to be able to say, I'm very conditioned. I think you have to be able to say, boy, I got a whole bunch of inauthenticity. And I'm really interested in understanding what that is. Mm. I, think that's, I, I think that's the first thing. And then being able to say, you know, okay, you, you have to have some kind of um, method for uh, examining your conditioning. So what's that? Well, I, I do that like I do. I, it, a lot of people do it, but it's like, you know, it's sort of the, the family of origin download. You know, look a couple generations back. What are the characteristics of people? What was the milieu in which you were raised? This is not rocket science. There's a lot of very pat pattern stuff going on here. Mm. What was the download mm -hmm. it, on all levels? Yeah, we all know it. I was taught that I wasn't the creative one or I was, you know, my sisters, they all have a story like, well, you were the creative one. So I became like the thing because mom liked, you know, house cleaning or, you know. You just said it. Yeah. Write your story. Ah. You're not your story. It's just your story. Write your story. What was your first story? Mm. Yeah, you weren't talented, you were blah, blah, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And look at the quirkiness, like what were the unfinished pieces? What were the hard parts of people? What were the compromises you made growing up in order to meet the needs of your parents? There's an idea that children, children, children will rush in to fill the deficit of the parent and all parents have deficit. So there's yeah. a little bit of that. Yes. Um, so you can do some therapy. You could get into a process of self-awareness. You could, any 12-step program in the country, they should all go into one bin and they should be called Egos Anonymous. And then you could just go through it. Powerless over my conditioned ego, my myth, my story, mm -hmm. came to believe in a power greater than my story. So I could go from inauthenticity, ready for the power greater than my story, authenticity. Ah, uh, right. That's the truth of who you are. Auth call it whatever you want your divine nature, your soul, your spirit, your blah, whatever it is, and then, and then commit to that. And then you can look, you, again, you know, good oh, meditation, another wonderful method. Observe your thoughts, observe your feeling. You've got to cultivate some way of observing the condition. And then I always say it is helpful, it is helpful to understand that you are not the center of the universe, that, that, that you are connected that, to consciousness. It is evolving. It'll do it with or without you. Right, mm. but you can participate in it actively right. if you want to, yes. and that's a choice. It's comforting to know that we're not by ourselves and that we're all connected, but we're, it also works to keep us from thinking we're above everything. You know, it's like we're all there, we're all together, and I, I just love that. It's just healthy, it's not mm. huge vanity time, and it's not utter worthlessness. It's we're just together. It, it, that will save the world. The more we can realize we're all in this together, that we are connected, that we are not separate, that's the only way out. The increasing sense of divisiveness is gonna, it's gonna yeah. collapse. Yeah. Because it's just not true. Wow. You you mentioned a book or you know what's coming up next for you? I mean, I you know um, you. I yep. I have a website. It's um, rickscottphd.com. Okay, we'll have all the links into the to the book and your book's coming. Uh, we're working on it. Working on, okay. Working right. on it, we're working right. on it. So yeah, it, a lot it, of interesting stuff I post on there. And so uh, yeah, that's where I am. Um, you guys, we have, if you go to arttolife.com uh, under podcasts, we have that little yellow tab uh, next to the episode and you can record a question and, uh, or a thought about uh, today's conversation. Um, we use these sometimes, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I read them all, I listen to all of them, and we sometimes will, we will uh, replace some of them and answer them. Uh, it's just great. It's a great way to, uh, you know, have, have a bit more of a conversation. So check that out. And if you can leave a review for us, uh, I really, really appreciate it. The podcast is getting out to more and more people, and I think it's, um, it's important, especially this episode. So, all, all right, right, then. Well, thanks Thank for having me. Absolutely. That was fantastic. Yeah, it's great. We'll have to do it again. Yeah.